Hi, how's it going? In this video, we are going to draw a triangle. We're pretty much going to hard code the data, the positions and the colors of the corners. And we'll just focus on getting that working first. And then in the video after, we will start passing in dynamic data. The thing with OpenGL and Vulkan and Metal and all this graphic programming is that just getting the triangle on the screen, there's usually a bit of work involved. A number of things. To start with, let's tackle the shader. So we'll just create a new file and we'll call this um, shaders.wgsl, which is web GPU shader language. And here it, we're going to write our shader. So I'll just get this started. Okay, so I'm making this struct that the um, uh, vertex shader program will output and this should look familiar to you if you've done any um, metal shader programming. So for each of these um, fields, we have the variable name, we have the type of variable, and then to the left of it, we just have kind of the usage of that variable. So this is kind of similar to typically in a vertex shader to set a position, you would set GL position equals something. That's a global variable. That's a built-in variable. And that's what we're doing here. And then when we have color, we're just specifying that this occupies location zero inside our program. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is write up the vertex shader actual program. Okay, so what we're doing is we're just taking in, oh, that should be vertex ID, shouldn't it? We're just taking in the index of the vertex that we're drawing as our input, reading that inbuilt variable, and we're using it to reference various positions and colors and pass that along. When we set this position, that automatically, automatically sets the position on the screen, and when we set this color, that color is passed on to the fragment shader. Now, well, kind of, because in between all of this data is passed through a rasterizer, which splits up and interpolates the positions and colors between each corner. So let's go ahead and look at the fragment shader. So nothing too exciting here. Um, maybe just worth noting that we are specifying that we are outputting to location zero. And we could interpret this as, this as the frame buffer, the color buffer that we're outputting to. It's possible to have multiple render targets and to output to different textures at the same time. But we're just going to go with uh, color buffer zero, which is the default kind of texture that we see on the screen. Long story short. Okay, so that is it. We've got our shader written and we want to use it. So let's go to our main TypeScript and I'm just going to get rid of this. Actually, before I do that, we'll go to the index and just get rid of this. I'm going to 
make a canvas and we're going to call the canvas um, it's it's the main graphics canvas okay we can specify other things uh, one way that we can set the size of the canvas is simply directly in the HTML and there we have it that's good so now we'll go back to the main file get rid of all of this and the first thing we're going to do is well I'm going to make a function so we'll say first thing we'll do is grab the canvas And there we have that. Okay, now I'm going to get an adapter. This type is GPU adapter. Now a GPU adapter, we can think of it as a um, wrapper around the graphics card and it's a wrapper around the physical graphics card. So we can use it to query um, what sort of performance our graphics card has, what sort of limits it has and all of that. And the way we do that is we go request adapter and we also need to cast that back. Okay, we've got that. The next thing we'll get is a device. And a GPU device is kind of like a logical device. It is a handle to all of the logical functionality that our graphics card has available to it. We do this by simply requesting a device and that returns a device to us. Now, in Vulkan we have instances, in OpenGL we have OpenGL contexts. In this case, uh, we're going to have a context. GPU canvas context yep we go get context and then we pass in the um, string for the context that we want to get and as we can see here there's a bunch of different options we're going to pick the web GPU context and request that Okay, we're going to have this um, GPU texture format, and that's essentially our pixel format. And I'm going to go BGRA. There we go. So our color buffer is essentially a texture. And so the texture format is the pixel format of the screen or the pixel format of the canvas that we're going to print onto. So then what we can do is we can configure our context. So we say context configure. And then it says in here, we put in a GPU canvas configuration, which we can double check in the node modules, web GPU types. Just have that open on the side. It's good to know. And what was that? That was a GPU canvas configuration. So we'll just search. And we can see all of these options that we can set. Now see that some of these we have to specify, but some of them have question mark. These ones are optional. They do not have to be set. And it is set as like a JavaScript object, like a dictionary. So what we'll do, so pass this in, we'll say, okay, device needs to be set, but we have that up above. Format needs to be set. We have that. And that can work for now. So then we need to create a pipeline. And again, if we're not quite sure what the data type for something is, we actually don't have to specify a data type here, but it is good to be a little explicit. So we'll go create render pipeline. And it says that this returns a GPU render pipeline. So that gives us our data type. It's a GPU render pipeline. Okay. 
Now what we take in here is a uh, render pipeline descriptor, which again, let's go back. There we go. Okay, so we need to set um, like a vertex state and ah, fragment state is optional. Okay, so we don't, have, okay, that's interesting. Hmm, interesting. So we can start to see how to set these things. Um, well, really, this is the part at which we need to actually load our shader code. So I'll get back to this in a second. I'm just going to just going to load this in. So we'll just open up command prompt and we'll say npm install ts typescript shader loader. Okay, good. That is there. Then I'll just go back to, yeah, we can close this. Just going to go back to the the webpack config, and I'm going to add another rule here. So I'm going to say, okay, uh, my test will be: does a file end in um, WGSL? And in that case, I'm going to use the TypeScript shader loader. And that's it, that should be set up. Okay, it's still not working. Well, of course, because I haven't finished the function definition, but let's go one step at a time. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to make a new folder called types. And inside that, Gonna make a new file. So you, we've seen this before in the node modules. They had all the type definition files here. This is a definition, a type definition thing. Uh, so we're going to define, sorry, not define, declare module. Okay, so anything Anything ending in WGSL is declared as a module. Okay, so this means we can import our shader code. So this is slightly different because we are not importing something which was exported. We're importing a whole module. Okay, there we have it. So now we can start using this. So we can say, okay, I'm going to create a vertex module here. And that is its own object. There we go. Okay, finally. So what do we need to create a render pipeline? Well, we need a vertex shader module and a fragment shader module. In order to do this, we take the shader code which we imported and we specify the entry point function, okay? And in the case of the fragment shader, we also specify the type of pixel format that we're writing to. That's important. And we're also going to specify the uh, topology which is being used to assemble shapes, in this case, triangle lists. Okay, so we're getting there. The next stage is we're going to create a command encoder.
and then we're going to have a texture view. Now, texture texture view is an image view, basically a handle into the color buffer, the render buffer that we're render buffer that we're currently drawing to. So we go uh, context current texture. create view. Yeah, so in order to access images, we need to create image views on them, very similar to Vulkan. Okay, now to record drawing commands, we have something called a render pass encoder, and this is allocated from a command encoder. A command encoder is basically a command buffer, more or less. Okay, so we've begun our render pass. We're just specifying which value the color buffer is going to be loaded in at. And because of this store up store, we're actually kind of keeping it. The keep We only have to draw it once and it will persist there. Okay, so now what we do is we begin rendering. So we take our render pass and we set the pipe line that we're working with. And we draw. Now see here we have the number of things. So we're drawing three points. Instance counts. We're only doing one instance. First vertex, number zero. First index, number zero. Uh, first instance, number zero. Okay. So then we just re end the render pass. And submit it. Okay, so yeah, more or less, there we have it. We just call that function, and that should get us going. Okay, so let's pop in and get this set up. Okay, no major errors, so we'll go and open this up. There we have it. Now I don't, what is this unsupported command line flag? Stop complaining. Okay, so there we have it. Now, side note, if we don't get this, something we can do is we can right click, inspect, and then down here we might have some errors. And um, note that because we have created source maps, we can see exactly where the issue is. It says default canvas component positing alpha mode will change from pre-multiplied to opaque. Okay, no worries. So let's just set that up with opaque. In other words, no alpha blending. So we'll just go back to the stage here. And if we're not sure about this, we can go, um, this takes a, where is it? GPU canvas configuration object. At the moment, I'm finding this, oh, that's not good. <laughs> At the moment, I'm finding this type definition file to be more useful than the documentation. Although the documentation is pretty good as well. So go um, GPU canvas configuration. There we have it. And this thing is called compositing alpha mode, which is either opaque or pre-multiplied. So, yep, no worries. We can go back here and we can say, and it also, kind of auto completes it for us as well. Yep, that is looking good. Then we can just build that and reload it. There we go. <laughs> and the error has gone away. Now, just as another, just to, to kind of verify this, I can pop back and let's say I break my shader code. Like it's a common error to actually put these semicolons at the end of each line because that's how it goes in GLSL, GL shader language. Now, if we go and rebuild this, it won't give any errors. 
Then when we reload it, it doesn't display. And, but, but, on the inspect, oh, it still works. Okay, well, it shouldn't be doing that. Um, in the inspector, it tells us in the shader program where the error is. It tells us the line number and everything, and we can go and fix that. Even though if we go to the main, that has all been, I could look at that, it's been minified out of existence. Um, but it links back to the original shader code. Anyway, I've been rambling. So I hope you enjoyed this session and I will see you again soon. Okay, have a good one. Bye.